All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started. I have already created a project called Learn JWT, which consists of two different folders, the client and the server. The client folder is a React app, which we haven't really implemented anything. It's just the create React app client. And the server side is a node application. And I have already installed the package for Express because we will be using Express to run our node server. You can see that I have already required Express, created the app, created the port number, and running the server on this port. Instead of using a real database, I went ahead and created a, an array which consists of two different users, John Doe and Mary Doe. But in your case, you will be using an actual database, whether it is Postgres or something else. Now we are going to go ahead and create a login route where the user can post their username and password. And as you saw in the last video, if the username and password is correct, then we will create a JSON web token. So we'll start with a post request on the login route. We will get access to the request and the response. Since this is a post request and the user is trying to post their username and password for authentication, we should be able to get the username from the request using request.body.username. Again, we will also be able to get the password of the user by using request.body.password. I'm using a clear text password. This is definitely not advised, but this is just an example of how you can create the JSON web tokens. In your case, you should be storing password in the database in an encrypted format. Since I'm parsing the body over here using request.body.username and request.body.password, I should also create a body parser or register a body parser. The body parser is now built into Express. So I can simply say express.json. This will allow me to parse the body, which is in the form of JSON, because the communication between the React application and our server is only in the form of JSON. Once we get the username and password, we need to check that if that username and password exist in our users array. There are many different ways of doing that. I'm going to use users.find function. The find function is the array helper function, which is available on the JavaScript arrays. We will go ahead and get access to the user, which is inside the user's array. And if that particular user dot username is equals to the username that the user has supplied and the user dot password is also equals to the password that the user has supplied, then we will be able to get the actual user. If this actual user is not nil, then it means that the user actually exists. So if user, meaning if it's not nil and undefined, then we can go ahead and generate the JSON web token. This is basically meaning that the user is authenticated and their username and password is correct. Else, we can go ahead and response with not authenticated. So now the question is, how do we generate the token? In order to generate the token, we can actually use JSON web tokens. In order to use that, we first need to install JSON web token. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and install JSON Web Token. Perfect, it's already installed. Next, 
we can go ahead and start using JSON Web Token by first importing it. JWT equals to require JSON Web Token. Perfect. Once we have the JWT, which is an object, it will contain a function called sign. So we can say JWT dot sign. In the sign function, it takes two arguments. You're going to pass in the payload, and the second argument is actually the secret key. The payload is simply what you want to put in the token so that you can decode it later on. Please make sure that you don't really put anything which is sensitive inside the token because this is not encrypted, it's just encoded. Meaning, if somebody can get access to your token, they can decode it and they can see what's inside the token. So don't put passwords, social security number, passport numbers, driver license number, credit card numbers, don't put any sensitive information inside the token. So what should we put inside the token? You can put something inside the token that you can later on use to identify the user. In our case, it is username. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a property called username and put user.username in there, which is simply the username of the user. The second argument is a secret key that you will need to decode the token. Over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and say secret key, but obviously make sure it is a little bit different and make sure that it is in the ENV or environment file instead of hard code it into your code. Because right now, if you publish your code on GitHub, it will be visible to everyone. This is going to go ahead and create a token. And we can go ahead and respond with JSON with this token. We'll send back an object where there's a property called token and the value will be token. If, however, the person is not authenticated, then we can send something else, success false. And we can also go ahead and write a message that we can say not authenticated. In the first case, we can also be a little bit more descriptive by passing in true over here. Great. Now, let's go ahead and run our server and test out this particular login route. I'm gonna go ahead and say nodemon app.js. Okay, looks like our server is running on port number 3000. At this point, instead of creating an actual React application, you should always check your routes using Postman or some other sort of a networking tool. I have already installed Thunder Client, which is a networking tool built into VS Code. You can also install Thunder Client by going to extensions and searching for Thunder Client. It doesn't really matter what kind of networking tool you're using as long as you are using something to perform these requests. So you're making sure that your server code is working and it is generating and giving you the token. So this means that if we pass in the correct username and password, then the server is going to generate a token for us using this sign function. And in the JSON, we should be able to get the token. Let's create a new request. It's a post request, so we're gonna change it to post. Let's go ahead and see HTTP, localhost, 3000, login, because that is our route. For the headers, let's go ahead and put a header called content type. And we will say application JSON because we are sending JSON. Next, we'll go to body, JSON, and go ahead and type actual valid JSON. So username, John Doe, because we know that John Doe exists, and password, 
which is password. Perfect. Let's go ahead and perform the request. And let's go ahead and see our result that we get back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and perform the request by pressing the send button. Now, the Thunder client is a little bit buggy. You can see my response is not available anywhere. Uh, I unfortunately have to click this button to check out my response, which is not really intuitive at all. And if I go ahead and click on it, you can see that my response is displayed over here. So maybe there's some setting in my machine that is preventing me to see the response and the request side by side. But the most important part is that we were able to get the token. So this token is now sent to the client. Now it is the client's responsibility to hold on to this token. And the way that we are going to hold on to this token is by putting this token in the local storage. Let's go ahead and see in the next video how we can perform this request and get this token into local storage.